Welcome back. Governor Mekai Hedoha says his vision is to revitalize Imo State and make it one of the top three most developed economies in Nigeria by the year 2025 and among Africa's top 10 by the year 2030. The governor outlined his plans in this regard at the maiden edition of the Imo State Enlarged Stakeholders Meeting in Oware, the state capital. He says his government will leverage on the abundant human capital and natural resources in the state to build an economy anchored on good governance, wealth creation, and value for money. The large stakeholders meeting is the first since the inauguration of the Governor Emeka Heredia led administration. Individuals and representatives of various social, political, religious, and business groups, as well as state government functionaries, are here at the governor's invitation to take stock and x ray the progress made by the current administration. This is just a great opportunity for us to say to ourselves we have been taking our state back and we are determined to rebuild it and move it forward. Governor Mekka Hedioha dances his way to the stage. He recalls his commitment to run an open and transparent administration towards actualizing his development agenda. We have been seven months in this job, seven months by 29th. By the strength and development of God, we have not reneged on our state mission. The greatest asset of our state is not in its government and not in its material endowments, but in its people. The governor insists his administration is still on course with a vision to make the state economy one of their best by 2025. We also set out to achieve this by leveraging our abundant human capital and natural resources to build an economy and call on good governance, wealth creation, value for money and rule of law. For some people, the reassurance from the governor is a sign that Imo State is on the path to greatness. Yedio has emergence has given hope to Imo people. He has started justifying the trust and you know making people to have confidence once again in governance. It's not about physical infrastructure, which he's doing, but it's about the trust we as leaders from Imo have in him. Imo is on its way forward. You can see government and governance you know, in action. This is very commendable, having this town hall meeting of stakeholders of Imo State coming together. So you see now that Imo is back to the people. The state government promises to convene this meeting periodically to intimate the people on its activities and seek advice where necessary in the interest of the state. The persistent gridlock on the Asaba Onisha Expressway is still a source of concern for motorists who spend hours on the roads. In spite of efforts by the Federal Road Safety Corps and other security agencies to ensure free flow of traffic, there's still a lot of dissatisfaction by road users over what they see as slow pace of work by the federal government on the second Niger Bridge. After bad roads, perhaps the next thing that frustrates motorists is watching free flow of movement on the other side of the highway while stuck in a gridlock. This is exactly the feeling of those plying the Asaba Onisha Expressway who spend harrowing hours on the road. Travelers who cannot bear to sit in a vehicle for such a long time resort to walking the rest of the way. Coming from all the way from Mauchi to here to trek with leg all the way from Onicha, ah, I feel it bad. While some see the government at the cost of their misery, there are others who call for patience due to the construction of the second Niger Bridge. Two hours, 45 minutes from uh, Abraka, Asabaye. Abraka, they got one place where they call Abraka for Asabaye. Now we're there for two hours, 45 minutes. It's not good. It's very stressful, to be very honest. It's just, it's just not worth it. You know, a journey of like six hours, 29 hours, doesn't make sense. But the go slow is too much. But what is causing the ghost load, you deserve second bridge. But they are working on it, but they have to be fast. The sector commander of the Federal Road Safety Corps in Delta State, though understanding of the plight of motorists, wishes road users could be more abiding to laws to ease the congestion and avoid accidents. My advice is to motorists, just like we have uh, recorded so far, 
thank God there has not been much of uh, crashes around here, but let them be sure that they follow you know, traffic regulation, obey traffic regulations, and ensure that their vehicles are in top form, and anywhere they see law enforcement, giving them road signs and directions, they should please obey. Whilst the people eagerly await the bridge to ease their woes, many will probably hold on to the memories of Yuletide to reduce the pain of spending hours stuck in unwanted traffic. In Gombe State, Governor Inua Yahaya has flagged off the construction of a thousand and one uh, 100 kilometers of road across the 11 local government areas of the state. The road constructions, according to the governor, will link up the urban and rural communities, thereby facilitating the smooth and seamless movement of people, goods and services within its nook and cranny. The flagging off of the project at Balanga local government area marks the beginning of the construction of the over 1,100 kilometers roads in Gombe State, the first of its kind. Governor Inua explains that the project is in line with his campaign and administration's policy to give residents of a state a sense of belonging. My intention is to make sure that every local government is linked up with roads in Gombe State. And uh, we'll try to achieve that. But let me sound a note of warning to all those that took compensation. From this moment, we'll never allow anybody to get compensated and yet give him chance to infringe on the road. Because if you infringe on the road, there will be no way for water pipeline, there will be no way for electrical poles, and there will be no way for any services to be extended to the people. According to the governor, all projects will be awarded to indigenous contractors in line with the state's policy as he vows to follow due process in addition to personally monitoring the project to ensure full compliance. The State Commissioner for Works and Infrastructure on his part expresses confidence in the ability of local contractors as he affirms the government's commitment to mobilize contractors and ensure quality and timely delivery of the projects based on contract specifications. The, the Network 1100 is uh, a program where we intend to provide a minimum of 100 kilometers uh, road in each of, in every, in every local government area of the state. Most of the roads that we are finishing uh, uh, in 2020 are the road projects that we, we inherited. Them. But uh, for all these uh, fresh projects, they are extending into 2021. The Network 1100 Construction Initiative is another policy thrust of the administration of Governor Inua targeted at bringing about social cohesion and unity among the various sociocultural and ethno-linguistic groups in the state. Staying in the north, the Nasarawa State Governor Abulahi Sule is giving assurance to residents in the state of a complete overhaul in the education system as over 300 projects have been awarded by the Universal Basic Education Board to address infrastructure deficit. Governor Sule insists that despite the huge expenditure on education in the, in the state over the years, the impact is rarely felt across primary schools. Our correspondent Halima Guillaume has a report. The Sustainable Development Goal 4 is the education goal which aims to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. In Nasarawa State, North Central Nigeria, billions of naira have been spent on the education sector in recent past, yet much is still desired at the primary school level. Dilapidated structures, inadequate teachers and poor sanitation facilities are evidently impeding the learning process. Abuzanga Primary School is one of the oldest primary schools in Kefi local government area of the state, established in 1948. Pupils of the primary and nursery sections receive lessons sitting on the floor. Some of our classes are dilapidated. They need a renovation. Our children, they were sitting on the ground, no seats. So those are the, some of our problems that we're having. No water, the so-called borehole they did is not functioning. Teachers are key to achieving all of the SDG4 targets, but 16 teachers are left to cater for 1,555 pupils here. 
There are a lot of challenges in this school, starting by the population of the children with lack of teachers. At the Model Science Primary School, the story is not different. Pupils also sit on the floor, and the ratio is 36 teachers to 2,000 pupils, with some volunteers rendering assistance. And why will you be teaching a pupil, and a pupil will be sitting on the ground? And you want it to be writing correct. When the building was built, they promised bringing the seats. But since we needed to enter, and there's no, the other building is not good. So the parents decide to help. <laughs> Just recently, blocks of classrooms under the SDG 2018 intervention in Lafia, Doma, and Kefi were commissioned by Governor Abdullah Yusele. Also concluded arrangements for the mass construction and rehabilitation of primary and secondary schools in the state under the auspices of the State Universal Basic Education Board, SUBEP. With the adoption of SDGs into the state budget and the highest allocation of 26.3 billion naira to education, science, information and communication technology in the state 2020 budget, Residents expect to witness the provision of adequate physical infrastructure, employment of teachers, and an inclusive learning environment. Halima Gayam, Channels Television News. And now to the arts. Contemporary artist uh, Patrick Agujato explores the concept of the environment and the role of buildings in recent solo exhibition in Lagos. The show, titled If Walls Could Speak, features the role architecture plays in influencing an individual, especially in the early years. This message on the wall just about sums up what the exhibition is about and what's driving the artist to put his best foot forward. But don't let this interesting installation underneath fool you. It's just part of the welcome party. This exhibition, we at SMO Contemporary Arts are thrilled to present Patrick's uh, first solo exhibition, showcasing works that have been in the works for many years. I mean, we started the conversation with Patrick in 2017 after we had showed him at the Lagos Court of Arbitration exhibition in honor of Professor Bruce Onobwekwaye titled um, Onobwekwaye and the Hamatan Workshop. Contemporary artist Patrick Akpojato is exploring the concept of spaces and how it affects the lives of individuals tapping from his own experience. Yeah, I basically use um, the works here to talk about how um, we influence our environment and how our environment in turn influences us. Architecture is given a new face as it now possesses human features and emotions. Given that title and looking at some of these um, issues on how environments, the environment influences us and how we influence our environment is um, basically my experience growing up in Ikeja. I, um, I discovered that some of these, um, some of the structures whether roads, infra, um, buildings, and all that, are named after people. I also note that um, some of these uh, are neighbors, friends, family friends will come to visit because they've come from a larger space. So the way they relate with our space, you know, feel, make them feel uncomfortable. The 2008 graduate of Fine Arts from LT Polytechnic, followed by a degree in Graphic Design from Lagos Polytechnic in 2013, wasn't content with the knowledge gained from school. He brought himself under the wings of veteran artist Professor Bruce Onobrakbea, and those who saw his early beginnings are impressed with the blossom. Fantastic. Very good. Excellent. Um, actually, for his age and um, training and the time he spent in the art, he has, uh, he has really, really uh, broken a new ground 
and this, I, I would say he's, he should be envy to his colleagues and even people who are older in the practice. He, he, his works are very good. The over 20 images touch on the essence of root, the surroundings. It's good to train a child in the way to go, but the environment plays a crucial role in the moulding process. And if these walls could speak, they'd be loaded with tales of what could have been done better. Still ahead on the news at 10, Arsenal suffer a late collapse as Chelsea come up from behind to win the London derby in Mikel Arteta's first home game in charge of the Gunners. That's on Sports News. Please join us again.